This morning, uh, we are going to have our first testimony time of 2023, so the new year. Uh, I'm going to read uh, a passage from Psalm 145, uh, talking about some of why we give testimony, why it's important. Psalm 145, starting in verse 3, it says, Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wonderful works. I will meditate. Everyone shall speak of the power of your awesome deeds and I will tell of your greatness. They shall eagerly utter the memory of your abundant goodness and shall shout joyfully of your righteousness. So a, a couple of things about this. So, so one thing in this passage that we see is that testimony is about glorifying God. It's about recognizing the greatness of God and the, the things that God has done. Uh, secondly, I don't know if you picked up on this, but in, in terms of how testimony is meant to be given, uh, there is a, a sort of meditative element to it where we, we reflect together on the things that God has done. Uh, but there is, a, there is a sort of joyful, exuberant, loud uh, shouting of, of, of God's righteousness and uh, of, of what he's done. So uh, when we give testimony, hopefully we're not too timid. Uh, we, we give it with some gusto. All right. Um, so let's praise God. Let's encourage one another. Uh, this morning, to kind of kick us off into this time, uh, we've invited Pascal and Deborah Ivaha uh, to come and share for a little bit longer. So often our testimonies in this setting are brief so that everyone gets a chance and you will still get a chance, but we wanted to give a little bit more time to these guys. Come on up. Uh, a little bit more time to these guys so that we could hear a little bit more of what God's been doing. So I'll hand this off to one of you. Here we go. Thank you. Good morning, Redemption Church. <laughs> So, so I'm Deborah, this is Pascal and Caleb, he's 21 months old, and, <laughs> and as you can tell with my accent, we are from France, and uh, we arrived here in August, um, so we came here for a year uh, to study at Regent, actually uh, Pascal studies full-time at Regent, I just audit a few courses and um, I take care of Caleb. Um, and it's a year for us to study at Regent and also a year of discernment for us about ministry or secular work or whatever. <laughs> um, so we arrived in August, as I said, and uh, so we were looking for a church and we decided let's go to the nearest church and the nearest church is a redemption church. Like we live 10 minutes away by walk. And um, so we came, we came here one morning and we've never left. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because we really felt welcomed and um, also we could feel Christ was here and, um, and also like we saw it was like, a, it seemed to be a family church and with uh, different generations, different nationalities. So we were like, let's continue to come here and we're happy we've continued. <laughs> Um, since we uh, arrived here in August, um, things have not been easy, um, really, for us. And um, <laughs> as you can tell, <laughs> um, so yes, being far from uh, our home, uh, our relatives, and uh, trying to find a balance as a family uh, for our life, and. Um, Going back to studies uh, after more than 20 years away from school in a very challenging uh, academically um, school and um, 
so yes, I mean, all these things, yes, have been um, not easy for us uh, to settle and to find uh, a way to, to try to do things. Um, on top of that, yes, so Caleb, 21 months, has been uh, teething a lot with all the disease. Uh, that's not also, um, I mean, he has had I mean, some very rough nights and obviously us as well. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's something that yeah we need to live through as parents in any case. And um, but our biggest challenge uh, from the last semester has been the the health of my dad. Um, so my dad fell sick in October last year, and um, he ultimately uh, passed away um, in December. And um, so we've received yeah, uh, support from various people and also support from some friends who are here with us today from Regent um, in the building. And, um, and one thing that I would like to highlight is also um, from the church. Um, there is one day uh, when Pastor Barry talked about it during a service. Um, I was crying on my chair and um, members of the congregation came around me. They put their arms around me, they prayed for me, and they shared my pain. And, um, and I could really feel uh, the warmth of a family. And, um, and I just wanted to thank the congregation for that. Thank you. That's really something that I will carry with me uh, as I remember this time. And, um, at the end of December, I had to go back uh, to my island, which is very far. It's uh, overseas French territory. And um, so for 10 days, I was away. So that's also a separation for us as a family. Uh, but I, I wanted to go there, obviously, I mean, to spend some time, couple of, I mean, some days with my mom and uh, my brother over there. And also, yes, to spend some time um, just uh, to grieve as well as as a family with uh, for the loss of my dad and um, so it's been yes a time of uh, separation for us as as a family and um, and now yes I will just uh, let Deborah um, comment as sh uh, she lived through this time as well. <laughs> um. So, as he said, like we've been through a lot of challenges, and but through all those challenges and difficult times, um, <laughs> so that's another one. <laughs> so, all through the challenges and, and difficult times, <laughs> like we've really seen uh, God's goodness and grace through you guys and through some region people and <laughs> and through other things. And <laughs> and one of the things was that um, when uh, Pascal's dad fell sick in October, we really thought that he he would uh, pass away at this time. And if he had like after he got better and passed away finally in um, in December, but if he had passed away in October, he would have been so much harder because we had just come here, like we didn't know many people. We were in the middle of the semester, and um, and also I was struggling with uh, with Caleb, with teething. We were struggling. I was personally struggling with motherhood as well. Being a mom at home, <laughs> that was a challenge for me as well. Um, and it's like if God gave us two more months to get ready, and. Um, so in December, when he passed away, I felt ready to be alone with Caleb. I was in peace with motherhood, <laughs> with being a stay-at-home mom as well. Um, so it was easier in a way. It was still hard, but uh, easier than if it had been in October. And like I could see God's grace in this. And also, when Pascal uh, was supposed to leave on a Tuesday, and the night before, it, it had snowed so much. So the, the plane was cancelled and uh, we were frustrated but at the same time we were happy to be able to spend more time together because during the semester we didn't really have time and um, so that was like good as well and, um, and also when he left, so he left on the Friday 
just before Christmas. And we have two friends who were supposed to come anyway for Christmas to visit us. And because of the snow, the flight was delayed as well. But the day Pascal left, they arrived. So it was perfect. <laughs> and during the 10 days uh, he was away, um, like I, there was not a single day I was alone. Like every day, like at the beginning I had my friends and then I had friends from region, friends from here. And um, um, so that was really good. And um, I forgot. <laughs> Um, yeah, and also like for Christmas, like I received so many invitations, like we, I received so much support from you guys and especially from people from our live group as well. And um, also when, um, uh, when Pascal came back, he came back with COVID, <laughs> so uh, it was quite bad. <laughs> so Pascal had COVID and Caleb and me, and when I had COVID, I injured my back. <laughs> So it was one thing after the other. But again, like, like through those trials, like we've seen God goodness again, because like so many people, like I call them my angels, like our angels, like so many angels from this church, especially from the life group, from Regent, uh, who took care of us, like bring food or, or just pray for us or just spend time. Like when I, wasn't, when I didn't have COVID, like I could hang out with some people. <laughs> so that was good. I needed that too. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, thank you so much, because like we haven't felt alone in our uh, trials, so... Um, so, we are French people, but we don't always complain, don't, don't worry. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, just to conclude, um, so... Um, so as you can tell, I mean, it, it's not been a, an easy journey for us um, since we arrived here. Um, but we, we have, I mean, it, it's shaking, but um, it's ups and downs. But we have, we're confident that God has placed us here for a reason. He has placed us here in this church as well for a reason. We don't always understand now why we're going through all of this, but we know that we're growing in character, in strength, in our hope as well, in the God that, that he is. And this is really what we are hanging on. And um, so, yeah, praise the Lord for that. And um, because, yes, I mean, it, it's not easy, but um, this is what really is something that is really helping us as well as, as we go through all of that. And um, one thing that we wanted to add as well is that and as an encouragement for the church here. Um, so Pastor Barry talked about, I mean, the vision of the church uh, two weeks ago, if I remember correctly. And, uh, and we are, as family, uh, living testimony that, that this vision is not only a vision on the paper. This is something that we've experienced, that we've lived through since we arrived here. And, uh, and I would just encourage, I mean, the church, I mean, to go on and to live this vision. And, um, and lastly, uh, just would like I mean, to share um, some scripture um, uh, because this really reflects uh, how, as a family, we've lived through this um, during this time. And um, so this is something as well that, that was shared earlier, but I would just uh, like to, um, to read it again. So that's Matthew uh, 25, um, 34 to 40. So it reads like this. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did, you, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and we gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? 
The king will reply, truly I'll tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. And so, yeah, so you guys did it for us and we just wanted to thank you again for that. That's our testimony. Thank you. Will you join me in, uh, in praying for these guys? I, I don't think it's quite all over, but <laughs> yeah. Lord God, thank you uh, for Deborah and Pascal and Caleb. I thank you for bringing them to us from a great distance, uh, for their willingness to brave a new country and a new culture. Um, thank you for the encouragement that you gave them before they came, a little bit of a, of a warning of uh, some of the challenges to come. And uh, we pray that you would pour out your spirit on them, Lord, that in the midst of great trial, uh, that you would be present, uh, that you'd be felt, that you'd be known, uh, and that you would deliver. Help them, Lord, to consider it all joy uh, when they encounter these different trials, knowing that the testing of their faith produces endurance. And we pray that uh, that the endurance would have the effect that you desire, that they would be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. So uh, bless them, Lord, in the midst of, of many struggles. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, this is your time uh, to be able to share. Yes, I see that hand, Carol Lee. Come on up. No, it's just the Holy Ghost. It's okay. I haven't developed Tourette's or <laughs> anything like that. Um, we decided to go down to Bethel for a healing conference because, well, I decided because I've got a list of seven people on my prayer list. I'm a prophetic intercessor, and seven have metastasized cancer, and the only thing that will heal them is God. I've got somebody with ALS. I have one lady that was I was just asked to pray for that has a condition that is atrophying everything in her body, and she'll probably be dead without a miracle within the year. And her husband just found out he had metastasized bowel cancer, and they've got young kids. I've got several brain tumors. I've got, you know, like, and I just said, God, that's enough. I need, I need us to get in this church the anointing for healing. And we need words of knowledge, and we need to be able to be big P Pentecostals, not little P Pentecostals. We need to see signs and wonders. And I really felt... Not like, oh my gosh, you got to go down to that conference. But I really felt we, I should go because um, I'd heard Randy Clark has the ability to pass on his ability to pray for the sick and, and uh, they get healed. So um, people went out to see John the Baptist because he was doing something. They went out to see Jesus in the desert because he was doing something. So I thought, well, I can go down to California. And um, then Andrea and Kai said they wanted to come. So we drove. It's a long drive. <laughs> uh, whoa. Anyway, one of the people on my heart, and I have her permission to share this, was Carl's mom, Karen. And a lady stood up. Um, I don't even think she was on the, one of the teams, but she had a word of knowledge that a woman with cancer was standing in front of a big window and immediately in my mind I saw Karen standing in front of their living room window and that um, oh, that um, this lady wanted to pray for her because um, she felt she had a word for her. And immediately Kai said, Carl's mom, 
<laughs> we just looked at each other. I, I had the same image. Um, yeah. But Carolee, too, uh, we both know multiple people with cancer at various stages. So it's significant that we both had the same image of the same person. And actually, the lady, the word of the lady who gave the word of knowledge said, said that, uh, I can't remember the wording, but that was standing, it's like the woman stood at the door and said, like, I, uh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. So I wanted to tell Carl's mom that night, but we got home too late. And it's like rush, 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 because you've got to be there for the next service. And then the Holy Spirit was on me so hard that I never. Well, it is. <laughs> well, it was worse. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't leave the building, so they would bring me food. <laughs> they took care of me. And uh, so I was going to do it the next night and couldn't. And I was thinking about it in the car. Well, if we get back early enough, I'll phone her. But didn't happen. So this morning, I sent Carl's dad a message. Tell Karen to call me. And he's typical, not very good at <laughs> answering his messages. <laughs> but And so he didn't. So I texted Carl, tell your mom to call me. So he says, oh, she'll call you this afternoon. And there was one of the preachers there, his name was Rich, I can't remember his last name, but he was like, he would have been like, Peter, just go for it, get out of the boat and do it, or uh, Joshua, let's go in and fight those Israelites, right? Or the, not the Israelites, fight for the Israelites. Anyway, I'm a little mixed up in the Holy Ghost this morning, so I'm not responsible. But anyway, ooh, um, uh, I said, no, Carl, I want her to call me before church. So she did. And she told me, She'd been battling the devil since 3 o'clock in the morning. And I said, well, a lady had a word for you. And I said, both of us knew it was for you. And I went up and I had the lady pray um, for you. And she said, this isn't unto death, it's for God's glory. And there's like multiple words of knowledge in this. Because on the way home, Kai says to me, what does 118 mean to you? I said, well, I don't know, maybe Psalm 118. And didn't think anything of it. And didn't have, my Bible was locked in my suitcase. This is my Bible. And uh, so uh, this morning, uh, I looked it up. And I thought, oh, it's a word for me. Uh, uh, verse uh, 5 says, From my distress I called upon the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is for me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So I thought, darn it, you know, I, I just had this. I had to phone her in the morning. And I thought that was it. And like, you know how sometimes you look at your Bible and you only can see part of a psalm? I really thought that was the whole psalm. But then, that was before I called Karen. And then, all of a sudden, I looked at the thing again. And um, verse 17 and 18 suddenly appeared. <laughs> Who knew? And, it's, and there's even more to the thing. And it says, I shall not die but live and tell the works of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Karen told me she was going up the stairs one day, and the Lord said to her, this is not unto death, but for God's glory. And words of knowledge don't always come clear like that. I, I was putting... Uh, what are those things called? I can't even remember. A Hall's wrapper. Yeah, okay. I was putting a Hall's in my mouth. And the first thing I see on the Hall's is, <laughs> yeah, you're laughing at me. <laughs> It'll hit you. <laughs> anyway, the, the rapper says, let's hear your battle cry. So let's hear the battle cry for the Lord. Your turn. Um, a few more things. <laughs> It's like Caleb grabbing at them. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, a few more things um, about that story is the woman who gave the word of knowledge was very nervous about it. 
And so when Carolee went up and told her, uh, it was incredibly encouraging for her too, and it built her faith too. Um, secondly, I had asked Carolee about 118 because during the conference I had had a dream. And in the dream, Carolee, there was a connection between Carolee and the number 118. So that's why I asked her that. Um, but had I not asked her, <laughs> um, it wouldn't have happened. So um, I know there's other people that want to come up here too, and we have so many. Well, I was actually going to tell them something else. Uh, there's there's too many. Another time, we'll we'll take more time. Um, but um, I wrote down some notes, and then the notes got longer and longer and longer, and I'm like, okay, one thing, God, which one? Um, so one. One thing I wanted to share is I have been, we more than just me, I know we have, and I know others in the congregation of just praying for new, uh, new uh, anointing and, and breakthrough um, in healing in all realms, in all ways, in healing and miracles. And I've been like, okay, God, you can give me this anointing anywhere, doing anything. But there is something about this trip that I felt was important to take, not because it had a name attached to it or it was in a certain location, but it felt significant to go there and to go uh, with uh, Andrea and Carolee and Skylar, actually. And I actually had a dream before I even knew anything about this conference. I had a dream of the four of us going to a conference and, and receiving something there. And when we came back, I looked to Vancouver and there was like this holy tornado that wasn't destructing it what it was is it was bringing a peace you know the eye of the tornado bringing a peace to certain spots and it was taking up the stronghold and the darkness like God is all about exchange right we give him that he gives us peace and the tornado was multiplying when I looked at Vancouver but it's because one in the dream I chose to go and two there was a point introvert, I can just stay in the seat and receive, <laughs> but uh, choosing to participate with the people around me, even though it's awkward and uncomfortable. And so I made great effort to do that there. Um, and um, that was part of the dream too. Things shifted in the dream from ordinary to miraculous once I made the decision to participate. Uh, so the dream was a cl clue, like Kai, step in, <laughs> be, be in it. So um, I've, uh, I'm already taking a lot of time. I know. I see. I see. I see Barry very, very kindly, patiently, standing more and more upright in his seat. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I, I won't. Uh, uh, a I'm just going to share a verse, but I, I had multiple situations about anointing. I was praying for it. I had a dream. Uh, no, before that, I felt God had told me to bring, we needed to bring some food down there, and I had a, a smaller bottle of, of, of anointed oil, uh, and for some reason, God kept told me to bring that for cooking, and I felt so embarrassed. I'm like, no, this is not for cooking, um, but I brought it anyway because it kept coming back, and then I had a dream while I was at the conference that, 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 that using that oil that was bringing cleansing and healing, and then at worship, a guy next to me, didn't know him, uh, said, hey, while you were worshiping, I saw an angel pouring oil all over you. And then there we had this time, later uh, we had a line and um, some of the leaders came to just impart to us. And many of them would just be like, more, more. Like, I don't really manifest, so they don't really pay attention to me. But, you know, so, but one person um, came by and stopped and said, I see oil and honey mixing, but that anointing kept coming back, and it's not to keep just for me, it's to share with everyone. Uh, so more, more to that, um, and lots more that we want to share. I, you know, yeah, so uh, we have so much, we have, there's too much, she's being very kind and letting us take the mic, but it was a great trip, we do want to share more with you, one-to-one uh, -one or however that works, but it was amazing. Go, don't go yet. Okay, let's pray well, real quick. There's a verse I was going to share, and then we'll pray. Um, and this is a kind of a verse. Uh, I try to a sort of a verse comes sort of every year. This is my verse um, of the year again before I knew I was going to go to this conference. But um, it's Job five eight through nine in the Amplified version. It says, um, "As for me, I would seek the Lord." intentioning to choose, like Moses chose to turn aside, intentioning to choose, I will seek the Lord and inquire of him. I'll ask, and I would commit my cause to him. There are a lot of, uh, you know, in, in internal decisions in that. Um, so I will commit my cause to him. 
Him who does great and unsearchable things, marvelous things without number. NIV says he performs wonders that cannot be fathomed and miracles that cannot be counted. Um, do you want to do the prayer? As <laughs> so I would just invite you, um, um, if you are able to, um, if you would like to, to stand with me, um, and uh, just uh, an act of faith and obedience. Just an example of what this trip was like. Um, Barry said, can you pray for us? And I thought, ah, I think I'm supposed to be praying. And um, I'm like, well, I'm not going to say anything. And then Kai gave the mic to Carolee, and Carolee's now give it to Andrea. And so those funny little things, that's what this trip was like. And it's Jesus breaking through. And so I'd like you to join me and join um, our faith in, in this um, incredible experience and join us in what the Father has for this church and has for this city, has for those that know him and has for those that don't yet know him. So will you join with us in our faith and our hope and our anticipation and expectation for the work of Christ, which is the reconciliation of mankind to the Father. Jesus, we come to you. We thank you that the story of the cross doesn't stop at the cross but it continues on to resurrection. Lord, we place our hope in you for the resurrection power and glory and life to fill us as servants of your ministry of reconciliation. Will you fill us to see with your eyes, to hear with your ears, to feel with your heart what you are doing around us. And I'm reminded of the word I released a few months ago about we are all different gemstones and stones and metallic substances and every one of us here, every one of us is a, is a different gemstone and a different substance. And all are necessary. All have a part to play. And so, Lord, I ask that you would release an anointing in every one of us, whether we're a pearl a gold nugget, an emerald, a, a ruby, that you would release an anointing to build up faith and an unction to do the work of the gospel mm -hmm. in the talents, in the skills, and the anointing that you have given us all. And Lord, I ask that you would propel us with faith into that which you have called us and prepared us for. Yes. And so, Lord, we cling to you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Will you take your word that says that you transform us from glory to glory? Will we give these words to you and you, we say, Abba, Father, will you let your word come to pass? Will you bring the truth and the reality of your kingdom come and your will be done in this church, Jesus? Will you extend the ministry and the gospel of reconciliation? 
And will you release us to do the work of the kingdom in this church, in this neighborhood, for your glory? Holy Spirit, come and speak to your kids. Burn in our hearts the truth of the hope of our calling for the glory of Jesus in his power, in his authority, and in his name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. <laughs> you okay? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. It's okay. 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 I'll All right. stay here. Yeah. Sure, do you want me to help you get back over there? Oh, no. I'll be, I'm worse if somebody helps me. Don't All touch right. me. All right. All right. <laughs> So I did want to make a, I did want to make a comment on, uh, on uh, this particular sort of manifestation of, of, uh, of uh, the Holy Spirit touching someone. Some of you might, might not have seen something like that. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's been more of an occasional uh, part of my experience than like uh, every week sort of thing. So if you're new here, uh, I think this has happened like twice in five years, uh, but it does happen uh, when, when God uh, is uh, doing something in a person's life. Sometimes it manifests in ways that seem kind of odd uh, to us, and I would just encourage you uh, in a couple of directions. So one direction is like try to like hold off on judging. Uh, because Jesus says that the way that we judge things is by the fruit, right? We, we know where something is from based on what it produces in a person's life. And so, um, yeah, if you're, if you're able, try not to like, you know, sort of uh, need, you know, have, a, have a knee-jerk reaction. Like, try to like be at peace. Um, and, and keep your eyes open to see, well, does this, does this produce anything that seems godly? Uh, the other encouragement that I have for you is there's a, a grouping of people that fall in love with this kind of thing. Um, they think, oh my gosh, you know, it's supernatural and there, there's something going on. And it's, it's the same standard of discernment, right? The, the standard is... Not how much does a person jerk or, you know, do odd things or fall or whatever like that. The question is, what does it produce in terms of godly fruit? Does it produce love for Jesus? Does it produce commitment to his cause and his message in the world? Um, this is the thing that we're, that we're looking for. So anyway, I won't belabor it. If you have more questions, come talk to me after. If it seems a little freaky to you, uh, honestly, first time I saw it, it was freaky to me too. So, um, and I, I think Carol Lee would agree, so. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I try to make space for God to do things that God would do that, that I think are odd, um, so. Okay, so uh, we have a little bit more time for testimony, and uh, yes, come on up. And then uh, I, I had a text from Simon, so Simon, you're on deck. Hi, Pastor Barry, thank you. I'm so blessed and humbled to be in this church for my third time in person but for many times online. <laughs> so, yes, Pastor. So, um, I'm Sylvia Nyamaize, and I'm a third-year PhD student at UBC. Um, I arrived in Vancouver in Agash, but I was doing my research in Agassi and Chilliwack plus Abbotsford and Hope, so I literally didn't know anything about Agassi. Uh, but when I arrived in August, I got a few friends at UBC, and I was looking for a church. And what all these friends told me, they're like, we recommend Redemption Church. <laughs> I was like, okay. I just looked at it from online, and then I had to come in December with my spouse. I think it was December, around 
early December. And then after that, I had to get COVID and then was online throughout. <laughs> but I would like to thank God um, that I felt so much convicted to give a testimony today. And especially after Deborah and Pascal's testimony, it is kind of a similar story, but maybe so much of extended for me. Uh, and it, it could be a, a word of like more encouragement to brothers and sisters in a similar just situation. I'll try to be brief. Um, when I was in Uganda, I was an assistant lecturer at one of the universities, public universities there, and then I got my scholarship to come to study at UBC for my PhD. But the time I was able to get a scholarship, that's when I got, that, that's when we began to expect for my third baby, Joy Eliana. So, being a Christian, me and Moses, we were, uh, sorry, Moses is my spouse. So me and Moses were really convicted and having very many people around us, everyone was like, we have another way of getting out the, the pregnancy so that you can be able to go for your PhD. So me as a Christian, <laughs> being brought up in that, we were kind of a very big confusion in my family. Can I go with my PhD, which I've been trying to apply for very many times and failing or I go with what the doctors, some doctors are telling me. So we were like, okay, then what do we do? So um, the Lord always has a plan for us. And uh, I will always, I like Jeremiah 29, 11, that whatever the Lord does, he has plans. He doesn't just bring things by mistake. He knows, although we may not see things today, Pascal, as you said, but there is a reason for everything in our lives. So um, we, we were in that, like situation because I'm doing agricultural sciences and all our research is in the field, which means like if you're expecting like you're eight months pregnant, it's hard for you to walk around like maybe drive tractors and so on. So that one would mean opting out for a PhD. But luckily enough, the Lord was able to plan for us as he has always been doing. And my visa papers were able to come when my child was born and she was one month old. So it was, I just knelt down and said, God, you always plan ahead. So it became tough just to cut the story short. My papers came in to be able to travel to Canada. I'm from Uganda, East Africa, but for my family, the papers didn't come. So I have two boys and one girl. My daughter was only one month. And then what next? I have to travel because my supervisors were calling me to begin my PhD or I opt it out for another person. So I had to travel away from my three kids and my husband and my family when I was literally w one month after birth to come and begin a PhD. So um, you are still weak, of course, as we know, sometimes you're still weak as an expert and as post-mortem, but I came and I began my PhD. I was working with dairy farmers in the Fraser Valley um, very many of them, like 10 of them, but I was able to pull through. No one was able to notice that I had just given birth. But every day I would kneel down and say, Lord, today I don't have energy. I'm just postmortem, but give me energy for my research. I would pray every morning with my spouse. Uh, being away from family is really hard, and from a baby who is one month and no papers to come in and join me since it was COVID. So, I really want to encourage everybody in that situation. Could be a separation from a job, from your family or from your relatives, from even friends, just stand strong because there is a happy moment in the future. So um, same as Pascal, Moses, my spouse was able to lose the only parent he had in the same, like in 2021. So I left my children for Moses and my mommy, my, like his mother, but then, in the same time when I was here doing my PhD, we lost Moses' mom. I was not able to go and send my mom away. And that was the time I was preparing for my comprehensive exams at the university. One month to, then she was laid to rest without me. So, but every day I kept on saying, Jeremiah 29-11, Lord, you know the plans. I may not see the future, but you know the plan. So I really thank God that I was able to pull through without my family and finally we were able to be given papers for my family to join me here so <laughs> yes uh, 
so I will also want to talk about one last thing about um, this church. I thank God that the first time I arrived here, I felt home, Pastor Barry. Uh, Luan, I don't know if she's here. She was the first person I met. Yes, Luan, and then Julie. I felt like this, I'm home. After all those very many years of COVID without meeting people, like praying and fellowshipping, fellowshipping is my perfect moment, like for God. But I really want to thank you for putting up this for us. And then also for the children. The first thing I always look for in a church is a Sunday school. And we were so humble to find that this church is caring for the children. So thank you so much, Pastor Barry and everyone here. Thank you for making a second home for some of us. So, yes, um, I would like to leave the last verse, um, which I always, I know also in my, <laughs> in my head, um, Psalms 23 verse one, that the Lord will always be our shepherd. We shall not always want. And this may not be in um, financial ways only or in the needs that we want, but it may be in you wanting your, your person to heal. That is also a, a need or from your heart, or in you wanting to complete your studies successfully, or in you wanting to have a good family. So he, he will always be there for us. Uh, Moses is not here. I think it was a dedication, and I prayed with Jenny Mary last time. He is looking for a job which can let him free for his Sunday. So the current job he has is weekends. So, but I believe that the Lord will put away always, and I'm always joyful. Yeah, that he knows it all and he has all the plans. Thank you, church. Thank you, Sylvia. All right. Uh, Simon, pop on up here. Good morning, church. How are we doing? I don't know how I'm going to follow up any of that. <laughs> um, as an introvert, I'm, I'm really happy that when the Holy Spirit touches me, uh, I just shed tears. And so I know, but I don't show anyone else. So I'm happy that uh, <laughs> nothing crazy happens to me. Um, uh, I just wanted to encourage you by saying God is good. And um, I'm thankful that Michelle uh, always says that. Uh, and she mean, means it, and uh, I, I want to get in a habit of uh, proclaiming that too. Um, so uh, I want to first of all thank you for uh, encouraging us, our family, by meal train, life group, and all the other ways. Uh, I can affirm that it's been like a second, second family here too. Um, so Ruben is seven weeks old. <laughs> Uh, which is excellent, um, and I, I love that you guys uh, have been excited for me to becoming a dad. Um, in truth, though, it's been very difficult. Um, I think people say uh, uh, postpartum depression for a mom, but I think I think I had it about a month <laughs> in. Um, I think, without a doubt, it's been the most difficult time of my life. I would say, uh, I think I was uh, pushed to the edge, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Uh, my world has been hit by a meteor. Um, anyway, it is, it's been very difficult. Um, but one of the ways that I think God has set me up for this season is, um, I'll share the verse from Philippians 4. 4. It says, rejoice, I will say it again, rejoice, and let your gentleness be evident to all. Do not be anxious, but in every situation, by petition and by prayer, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Um, that verse, uh, shout out to Zoli for helping me memorize that. Um, every day was just, I mean, every hour was such a struggle and I kept going back to that verse. And 
there was a point where um, I just thought, why is it so hard? Why did I, part of it is, why did I do this? Why did I agree to do this? Um, <laughs> and, and why is God doing this to me? Um, and uh, it's, it's not fully finalized, but I can, I can tell you that uh, I'm noticing subtle changes in me uh, through the wall, as a, a book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality would call it. Uh, I would never, if I knew this is what being a dad is like, I wouldn't have chosen it, to be honest. Um, or, I mean, I, I like my comfort. I wouldn't choose anything difficult, to be honest. But through this process, um, yeah, God has been changing me. And it, it's, I, yeah, I think I'm happy that I can feel God's presence through the hardship. And so, um, yeah, I wanted to share that with you. Um, thank you for the support. And... I just want to say the verse one more time, and if you want to sort of, uh, we could raise it up as our prayer together. So it's, uh, rejoice. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Do not be anxious, but in every situation, by petition, by petition, by petition. Uh, and prayer. This is prayer. With thanksgiving, let's present our requests to God. And the peace of God, which we don't really understand always, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, thank you, guys. Thanks, Simon. All right. I'm going to bring back the worship team at this point. Sorry for the delay on that, but come on up. These guys are going to bring us home here. <laughs> 